Okay, hello guys, guys and gamers and welcome back to another video. Before we begin, I would just like to remind you guys to please like and subscribe. If we get to 500 subscribers by the end of the year, I will do a live stream tearing apart my least favorite game of all time. That would be fun because I am a game designer, so there is, there is a lot to complain. But yes, also, if you want to, you can also comment down below because I really want to start a discussion with my videos. But yes, let's talk about Pokemon and Game Freak once again. And I know I kind of promised you guys a video where I would look at the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet reveal trailer. But uh, I think I will do it a bit later since we got so little actual gameplay in there. And like I said, I do design games, so I would like something a bit more to get my hands on so we can have a better discussion on what's going to happen. But yes, today we are looking at Game Freak especially. And um, Game Freak doesn't have the best track record when it comes to video games. Uh, some of their games uh, have not been so polished, I'm mainly talking about Pokemon here, but uh, this applies to some other games as well. And uh, people often say that Game Freak is some sort of a bad developer and uh, Pokemon games are rushed. They are not the prettiest games out there, even comparing to like their own spin-offs. If you look at New Pokemon Snap or Pokken Tournament, they do look uh, much better than the mainline Pokemon games. So I wanted to dwell in a bit more in this. Is Game Freak actually a bad developer? Is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet going to be rushed? Uh, what kind of problems does Game Freak have? And why do they have these problems? Not, let's, not, let's not just like blame Game Freak for everything. Let's look at why they have these problems. And also, in the end, I want to talk a little bit about like uh, what kind of solutions can we come up with so future Pokemon games can be of higher quality? So, yes, let's just uh, begin. The first problem I want to cover that Game Freak definitely has is size. And a lot of people say that size doesn't matter, but when you are a big game development studio, definitely it does matter. And when it comes to major game studios, uh, Game Freak is actually a lot smaller than average. Game Freak, uh, if I remember correctly, Game Freak has about 160 employees. And uh, you might think, okay, that's quite a nice amount. But compare it to something like Monolith Soft, a company, a studio working for Nintendo that makes the Xenoblade Chronicles games. They have around 250, so almost 100 more. If you think about it, Xenoblade is a much less valuable of a property. Not saying it is worse or anything, but just think about it. It is expected to make a lot less money, the uh, just sales expectations and how many copies it will sell. Uh, it's definitely less and that kind of stuff. So Game Freak definitely has a size problem. But why are they so small and why don't they just, you know, grow? What is stopping Game Freak from just, you know, growing and growing, getting more employees? Well, one thing is, of course, hiring is not easy. You would have to, you know, train people and get the right people, make sure they work in a similar work culture and adapt them to this, blah, blah, blah. And then the biggest reason why Game Freak just hasn't grown is kind of shocking in its simplicity. Uh, they don't want to. They don't want to grow. They uh, like being small. Even though, yes, they have the biggest media property in the world, they don't want to grow. And uh, this is something I actually respect Game Freak for quite a lot. Because this is not an attitude you see often. But it is an attitude that I can relate with. I personally don't like the stuff that is too corporate. And this, they, Game Freak started out as like a small fan magazine of just gaming. And then they got an idea to develop one of their own games, pitched it to Nintendo, and that became Pokemon. 
And there is still like this smaller indie spirit within Game Freak. And if they would grow, it would just mean everything would change. It would get a different work culture and a lot more things to manage. It wouldn't feel the same. And Junichi Masuda has said, like, in an ideal world, things would stay as they are because they really like how they are making games at the moment. So there's more. And that is definitely a bit weird to have uh, the largest IP ever in such a small studio. But they've managed all right so far and they really enjoy what they do. So they don't want to grow. Okay, problem number two, time. Uh, I think this is the biggest obstacle Pokemon has going against it, or Game Freak has going against them. And it is just time. They don't have enough time to make a really highly polished uh, product in the end. And this is such a shame. And the cruel fact here is that you can't really delay a Pokemon game especially like a major one, like a new generation of Pokemon. If you're going to delay it, you will have to know it years in advance how long the delay will take. Because Pokemon is more than just a game. It's a brand. It is tied to so many things. There's the anime, the card game, all of the merchandise stuff other game integration like Pokemon Go maybe, maybe Smash Brothers and everything is just tied to the video games. Video games are their flagship product still. It's kind of like Star Wars has their movies as their flagship products. Uh, Pokemon goes with the games first. Everything big, new regions, uh, new Pokemon, they're always introduced uh, in the video games most of the time. Like, that is the main thing for them. So having generations every three years doesn't give much time to really polish the products. And this is different for like most video games. And if you want to delay something like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which was infamously delayed for like two years, you can't do that with Pokemon because it's tied to so many other things. And there's just not enough time to make a really new thing, make a cool new product, and they just don't have enough time. And Game Freak also has had a lot of new challenges, like the past 10 years. If you look at uh, the growth from Pokemon from like 2003 or so, when Ruby and Sapphire came out, to 2012, when Black and White 2 came out. They're still 2D using sprites, uh, top-down game, not much has changed. But if you compare that to, again, uh, nine years later, we have from Black and White to we got to the first 3D games in the Pokemon mainline series with X and Y. That is a lot. And you would have to, well, the 3D models were made prior to this, but there's just a lot of like making your first 3D games when you're just used to making 2D top-down games. It's a lot. There's a lot of new problems that come their way. And then, okay, Sun and Moon, make another one and it looks significantly better because they got used to the technologies, the console, and just making 3D games better. But then we got into consoles, which uh, people expect much grander adventures. HD is now a thing. Uh, people wanted open world, even more challenges. So they don't have time to explore this. And this is why recently we have had like the second generation for uh, each console look so much better because Game Freak just doesn't have the time to really get familiar with these technologies and concepts that they have never worked on before, like 3D or open world or HD console games that are much more expensive and are expected more of. So yeah, and Game Freak still likes to make these games and they want all of the games to feel unique in some way. 
including new color mechanics like uh, Mega Evolution, Z moves, and uh, Gigantamaxing, and new feels like having a tropical themed region. So it is a lot to manage time wise, and game development, everything you can think of, it takes like so much more time if you think like oh gee okay just add this feature but this feature is connected to so many things there's a lot to do so that's and a lot of game development is just how can you do this cool thing as fast as possible and usually the answer is how can you use the assets we already have to do this and that's why a lot of the games feel so familiar or similar uh, because they use a lot of the new stuff because they don't have time to make these things again. And so far, Game Freak, I think they have managed okay. And they do this by having two teams. Uh, they don't all just work on one product and move on to the next one, like some studios might. Like, for example, uh, one team made Sun and Moon, and then the other team took over and built Ultra Sun and Moon out of it. Then one team made Let's Go while other team was making Sword and Shield. And this is why I don't think um, uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are going to feel rushed. They are going to feel better than Sword and Shield, definitely. And Pokemon against Arceus was definitely made by another team. Uh, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl was not made by Game Freak at all. So I think they definitely did have some time to uh, make this new generation and it had already been planned. And hopefully they get everything under control uh, by the time it releases. And problem number three is complex com complexity. Complexity, yes, I can read. From my own uh, notes there. As I mentioned previously, games are really hard to make and everything you want to do takes a lot of time. A lot more time than you can imagine because you're not actually a game developer. It's just a massive project to make a video game. All like triple A games that you play, they have like hundreds of thousands of codes at minimum written for them. Maybe sometimes even multiple millions of lines of codes and that those are all written by someone. So it takes time to think about what you're going to write and how to do things correctly. Sometimes you have to change things. Sometimes you have to erase like a million lines of code because things just didn't work and you have to recreate some of the stuff. So it's a massive task and it's just a miracle that anything gets made. But then you look at Pokemon, which is kind of a unique mess to make in itself. And when people talk about changing some of Pokemon's features, like um, the uh, battle system, uh, they often compare Pokemon to games like Final Fantasy, maybe Dragon Quest or Persona, other, you know, RPGs. But I don't think those are like really good comparisons at all because those are all self-contained single player experiences and Pokemon is not one of those things neither of those things and um, I have watched a lot of videos like okay if Pokemon were to change their battle systems they should do this and this and this because these other franchise did those but no one ever talks about like multiplayer which is one thing Pokemon is also a multiplayer game, multiplayer battles. This is why you can't uh, battle in Pokemon Legends Arceus because they changed the battle system a bit, but it's not really suited for competitive multiplayer. Pokemon has uh, Pokemon World Championships almost every year, depending on the world situation, of course. But that is one thing they need to consider. Pokemon is also a multiplayer thing. And then it's not even self-contained because Pokemon have to be transferred over to some system, Pokemon Bank, Pokemon Home, or just straight up to the next generation. And they have to work in a similar manner. That's been a case for so long. If you get a Game Boy Advance, uh, open up Pokemon Ruby and go capture a Zigzagoon, say, you can transfer that Zigzagoon uh, through like, what is it? almost 10 years now, oh no, 20 years now, 
over 20 years of games from console to console, you can move that forward to the current game. You can't do that in Final Fantasy. In Final Fantasy, you always use like different characters. Maybe you have some character again, but they don't carry over the stats from Final Fantasy VII that you played. They don't carry over to the Final Fantasy VII remake. That's not a thing that happens. And they are all like, it's just so, such a complex mess that you really have to think about everything. If you're just going to change one thing, it can have major consequences in like some other thing. Like this is why you don't have like Shedinja in Pokemon Legends Arceus because you don't have abilities. And now some Pokemon really depend on their abilities to, you know, have their own gimmick. So it's, it's, it's a mess. It's really a complex mess that you really have to think about what you're going to change. If you're going to change anything, how much time it will it take and what will it, what kind of consequences will changing this one thing have? And yeah, uh, solutions. How can Game Freak, you know, continue to make better and better games uh, looking at what kind of a what kind of problems does do they have right now? And the first thing uh, I would suggest is more collaborations and other people just working on Pokemon, other than just Game Freak. I want Game Freak to work on Pokemon, of course, but for like their main series titles, they could ask like help from Monolith Soft. You know, hey, you guys are better at doing textures. Uh, we don't do so many good textures, just like, look at our rock textures. Our rock textures are always bad. So could you help us, like, do the environmental stuff, and then we could focus on, like, the gameplay and that kind of stuff. So get some help, collaborations, and I loved what they did with Brilliant Diamond Shiny Pearl, is that they didn't. They got Ilka, another studio, to make the remakes. And while you might not like those remakes yourself, and they definitely do have their own problems, you know, still got Game Freak more time to work on other things, so they didn't have to do a faithful remake themselves. So I think that's a good thing. And that's definitely something that should keep happening. You know, Gen 5 remakes have another studio work on it again, but this time add a bit more, you know. <laughs> And uh, next solution, just uh, make the generations last a bit longer. Uh, currently, they have been around three years long. So make it four years, make it four years, get a bit more time and then just have uh, remakes come every now and then. Those can be made by like other people. And so you have better time to make better games. And you don't have to worry so much about this project and this project, have so many projects going on. And if that doesn't work, you can just try and detach the games from the generational cycle altogether. You know, don't have generations anymore, just have new games coming. And some of those games add new stuff. Some of those games have a new region, but this, this one has a new region, but doesn't have new starters, but... This one has new stages, but it's in the same region. You know, just make good games. Don't worry about the cycle anymore. Detach yourself from the cycle so you can do more creative stuff. So, maybe that could work, but who am I to say? But uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you understand a bit more where Game Freak is coming from. Uh, what kind of problems do they have and why Pokemon games might sometimes feel a bit less than other games. They are not as polished or not as graphically intense or beautiful, but I, I, I still like them and I still like their games, so I'm willing to forgive that. I just wish they had more time, basically. That is the biggest thing. Um, what kind of suggestions do you have for Game Freak? How would you uh, change Pokemon for the better and change just 
Game Freak for the better. Let me know down in the comments, I have nothing else to add here, so I'll just see you guys next time. Bye bye.